Hello, and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary. My name's Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies you can implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolios, and therefore what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. And please remember the past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. Having all that out of the way, let's get it on with some economic data. Uh, across the pond, we got French uh, final CPI month over month came in at a negative 0.2% was expected to be a negative 0.1%. That's not as robust as their flash uh, CPI numbers, but it is a good indication. It's more of a lagging indicator, I actually should say. Uh, but then here in the United States, uh, we got our PPI numbers, which is the producer price index. Month over month came in at 0.4%. And then when you look at the core PPI, which strips out food and energy, some of the more volatile aspects of that economic data point, we came in at 0.4%, it was expected to be 0.2%. Uh, unemployment claims, weekly unemployment claims came in at 243,000, lower than the expected 251,000, so that's actually good. And then uh, we earlier this morning, we had Mario Draghi speaking, which is the ECB president, and a couple of Fed governors here in the United States also speaking. Uh, we had Bernard and Powell speaking. Then we got our natural gas storages came in at 87 billion cubic feet, expected to be 74 billion cubic feet, uh, a little higher than expected there, so a bit of a build. And then on our crude oil inventories, it came in at a negative 2.7 million barrels, expected to be a negative 1.9 million barrels and no revisions to last month's number. Uh, if you remember, that was a massive drawdown of 6 million barrels. Uh, that's what's making me bullish on crude oil. Uh, we've gotten crude oil coming off today. It's down by about 51 cents, still in that $50 handle, but uh, we have recouped a lot of those losses on the downside on that economic data point from the crude oil inventories, all right? Um, so, um, not doesn't look great for me today as it may look a little bit toppy. Uh, coming up and testing that 50 or that 23 Fibonacci level here yesterday and coming away from that. But uh, with that economic data point on the crude oil inventories, I think uh, I am um, looking a little bit better, especially with the move that we've seen off of that number. On to gold futures, up by about $6, almost $6 now, testing that 50 day moving average, the value area high. I still am bearish on. Gold futures uh, gets much above that value area high or above that 50, uh, uh, 50 um, sorry, <laughs> uh, moving at 50 day moving average. I kept wanting to say Fibonacci level, but I'm not the 50 day moving average. If it gets above this, which is really acting as resistance right now, uh, I'm gonna have to rethink that whole thing, but it's still looking like it is in a trending downward trending channel. Uh, on to the bonds, you know, nothing to really see here. We did have a couple of those Fed governors speaking, but not enough to really make the market move. I've talked about this. I think everything's lining up right here. It's pretty hunky-dory unless we see something really major come out that's going to jar this market in one direction or the other. I don't really see it moving uh, very much for the foreseeable future. It's stuck right there in the mud on that magnet, which is the value area uh, or point of control, I should say. Uh, and this, all of the moving averages are starting to culminate there as well. Uh, with the VIX, VIX, we got a slight move up on the day, uh, not up into the double digits again yet, but uh, still slightly up on the day. Uh, and then we look at the reason for that, why it's not really rallying for the most part. I mean, we do have a bit of a mixed bag. We have the Dow Jones Industrial Average printing uh, an intraday all-time high but yesterday one of the key things was is that it settled at a all-time high as well so uh, everybody was celebrating that I'm sure you saw that on TV just about everywhere and then we've got the NASDAQ printing a new all-time high of uh, 6,000 
97 uh, and just pretty much starting to trend sideways. It's starting to feel like we're, we're ready for a move in these equities the, uh, with the NASDAQ being up. We've got the E-mini S&Ps down on the day. So that's what I was talking about with a mixed bag with the E-mini S&Ps down. Uh, yesterday, they did settle at a historical all-time high as well. Uh, but as you can see, mostly profit taking overnight. Looks like the overnight inventory or the overnight market was relatively short coming into the day that uh, snapped back uh, very close to the all-time highs as well. Uh, On to a few things that I've done. I talked about this with this rubber band winding up. We're ready to snap in one direction or the other. As you can see, we have super low implied volatility across the board uh, for most equities other than the ones that are starting to uh, come into their earnings or getting very close to their earnings, that binary event that should affect those. So I decided to go into the spoos and do a long straddle. Uh, I've done webinars on this and uh, I moved the, uh, the moved to the near month in a sense where I did the November. Normally I would look at the December. So it's still a little too pricey for me on a on a strategy that I'm just trying to put money to work in a sense. I've got a lot of, I've taken off a lot of uh, positions and I really need to put some money to work in both my IRA and in my uh, margin account. So I actually did this trade in both my IRA and in my margin account. And I did the November 255 straddle and I paid $4.87 for both my margin and in my IRA. I just needed to put some money to work and if there's a big move, I want a little bit of protection. So that's kind of why I did that uh, trade there. I'm going to have a short leash on it. If this market really doesn't make a, start making a move pretty soon, I'll probably end up pulling that one out rather early. And then on to the next trade that I did. I only did this one in my margin account. Lululemon's kind of been bouncing back and forth in a relatively uh, tight range, but I was able to pay less than what that range has been in this uh, Lululemon. And I um, I don't really see Lululemon uh, being bullish or negative necessarily, bullish or bearish, but I do feel like it's ready for a move. Uh, it's kind of calmed down for a while. It started making that move today. Thought about doing this yesterday and just kind of held off on it, but decided today that it would be a good time to maybe uh, put on another straddle in a sense on a long straddle it's got low implied volatility so i decided to do that and we could start seeing volatility increase in this particular underlying uh, as we approach nearer to that binary event so i decided to do a straddle in there also i'm just really struggling right now with some market directionality the markets are just really kind of ho-hum uh, if you will, especially this week. So I decided to do these long straddles for that reason as well. And then Lululemon, ticker symbol LULU, I went into the November again and sold the 60 straddle, which if you remember, that's 60 calls, 60 puts, selling both of, or sorry, buying both of those because of the low implied volatility. We're a buyer of these and paid $4.05 for that. So hopefully I can get a big move out of both of those trades and I'll be very happy. I don't care which direction they go because it uh, is market agnostic in a sense in that the uh, we don't care which way it goes as long as it makes a big move. So if it moves down $4, I'll be happy. Uh, th that trade will be quite nice right away. So I'm going to be playing that. I'll talk about it when I take those off. Tomorrow's webinar is going to be on the butterfly and it is going to be on the put butterfly, but we are going to eliminate risk to the upside with that strategy. I'm going to show you how to go through all of the strike locations for that to create that broken wing butterfly uh, on the put side. I already did the call ones, but this one's going to be on the puts. So go check it out at protraderstrategies.com, you know, because this is a great one. Uh, if, if Lululemon had any volatility at all, it might be a good candidate, but because it doesn't, it doesn't fit the rules that I will be talking about in that webinar. All right. So if you can't take that, take it easy.